Is York the most beautiful city in England? I've heard many people ask this question before and Adrian and I just had to find out to answer the question ourselves. Wandering the city felt like traveling back in time while discovering York's fascinating history. York was entertaining and definitely a place for good food. And after spending nearly two days in this ancient city, Adrian and I found ourselves agreeing with those who seem to think that this quaint city in Northern England could well possibly be the most beautiful city in the country. Adrian and I would love for you to join us on our countless adventures. Subscribe now to get notified of our upcoming videos. York is located in the northeast of England, a little over 200 miles north of London. From San Francisco, we flew to London Heathrow and drove north, but not without stopping at a service station where Adrian satisfied his craving for British snacks. That was successful. <laughs> Chicken tikka slice, and most importantly, a whisp of gold. <laughs> Where are we? York. <laughs> and should I say York? From the moment we started exploring the city, we noticed how quaint and well preserved its buildings were. Every street was full of charm, and at Minster Gates, we found some artisan shops, including the Hebden Tea Shop, with its plethora of unique and interesting flavors. Adrian decided to go traditional with Earl Grey, while I tried something more adventurous, orange ice cream. Another fun shop was John Bull Candies, with its colorful bonbons and funny mugs. Our first stop was the historic York Minster, where there were many signs detailing the stories behind the historic structures around the church. These signs can be found all over the city, and they are all worth a thorough read. Before we went in, we made it a point to enjoy the church's beautiful surroundings and admired the historic buildings on College Street. No trip to York would be complete without visiting York Minster. York Minster is an architectural masterpiece in the heart of the city of York. Once called the Cathedral and Metropolitical Church of St. Peter in York, this place of Anglican worship dates all the way back to the year 627, making it over 1300 years old. The Minster's intricate stonework, magnificent stained glass windows, and awe-inspiring interior offer a glimpse into the rich tapestry of England's medieval past. An important part of the Minster is the crypt, which we think no one should miss. York Minster's crypt isn't just a burial site. It's a window into the city's deep history. The crypt holds a legendary figure. Folklore says the tomb of York's patron saint, St. William, resides here. Here, you'll find the remnants of a Roman fortress that predates the minster itself. Explore carved Norman capitals in a fascinating doomstone, a sculpture depicting hell. Beneath York Minster's grandeur lies the Undercroft Museum, a treasure trove of the city's past. Here, history comes alive with Roman soldier footsteps etched in stone and archaeological finds whispering tales of Viking York. Interactive displays bring the Minster story to life, while artifacts like the ancient York Gospels, still used in services, offer tangible connections to the Minster's rich heritage. I recommend that you book your tickets online prior to visiting as it gets busy in the Minster, especially during peak season. And if you do, make sure to include the Crypt and the Undercroft. And during our entire stay in York, Adrian and I enjoyed the songs that the church bells played throughout the day. Aside from being historic, 
York is also full of fun. Just check out the name of the shortest street, Whitma Wapma Gate. Known in 1505 as Whitnar Watnar Gate, it was changed eventually to its present name, which is now somehow similar sounding. Close by is King Square, with its old yet historic crooked buildings that house famous establishments such as the Duke of York Pub. It's also the perfect gathering place to watch street performers. These guys were so much fun, by the way. King's Court is also where we found the Mecca for Chocolate Lovers, York's Chocolate Story. York's Chocolate Story is a must-visit for any chocolate lover. This interactive museum takes you on a delicious journey through York's rich chocolate history. You'll even get to learn how to taste chocolate like a pro and create your own chocolate treat. But perhaps the most famous of all attractions in York is the Shambles. The Shambles has a dark past. Butcher shops and slaughterhouses once housed this charming street, dating back all the way to the past before it was rebuilt in the 14th century. By the way, just look at those sausage rolls and pies. I swear, walking through this street made me feel like I was in a Harry Potter book or something, with its historic leaning timber buildings and wonky cobblestones. Even the shops at the Shambles are adorable and authentic. Kids love the Potions Cauldron and the many stores that sell items of wizardry. As with many other British cities, the Shambles is what is thought to have inspired Diagon Alley in the Harry Potter books. Here on this street, you will also find the Shrine for the Pearl of York, St. Margaret Clitheroe. Wait, we just missed something. It's a cat! There are statues of cats all over York which were placed, some say, to frighten away mice that carry diseases and plagues. But some also say they were installed because they are just a fun addition to the buildings. A few steps away from the Shambles is the amazing Shambles Market. Here we found a few stalls that sold anything from clothes to phone cases. The best part of the market is the food court. Who needs to go to a restaurant when this market has so many different types of food to offer? But what really drew our attention was Crumbles, a small stall that sold crumble and custard in many flavors. Crumble is a delicious British dessert where fruit compote like apple or rhubarb is topped with a shortbread-like layer of crumbs. Then, it is smothered with hot custard. Yummy! And that custard ice cream is to die for, too. But one thing to remember about the shambles is that it gets very busy. On Coney Street, you will find St. Martin's Clock, which was erected in 1668 and has been redesigned many times ever since. Not far from the shambles on the pavement is the Golden Fleece Pub and Inn, which is said to be England's most haunted inn. Our friends have also told us that Betty's on St. Helens Square is a must visit. Unfortunately, we couldn't get in due to the long lines. I guess it's a very popular spot. Walking around the stunning city of York gave us amazing views, but some of the best views I believe were seen while we were walking the York City walls. The first one we walked on are the Roman walls, which were built originally around 71 AD when the Romans erected a fort by the banks of the River Ouse. York, since the Roman times, has always been protected and defended by walls of one form or another. The majority of the remaining walls, which encircle the whole medieval city, date from the 13th to the 14th century. The walls have fallen into disrepair many times, but they were restored in the Victorian period, providing many vantage points for the stunning scenery at the foot of each wall. These walls have been modified multiple times, but still provide amazing views of the city, especially with the minster spires towering above the trees. At the walls, you will find bars, which were gatehouses. These bars were once gatehouses that were designed to restrict traffic in medieval times. The most prominent ones to date are the Micklegate Bar, Monk Bar, and the Bootham Bar. A lot of the streets in York are named gates. Well, this is because of its Nordic origins. 
Gata in Old Norse means a path, way, street, or road. York has a lot of historic ties with the Vikings. The best way to learn about this is to visit the Jorvik Viking Center. Here we saw underneath these glass floors what was once Nordic buildings and we were taken through an interactive storytelling ride about York's Viking past. Adrian and I really found this small museum to be very fascinating. Jorvik was the Viking name for York, where the Vikings invaded and settled for centuries. Life back then in the early days when York was still called Jorvik were showcased as we were taken through the interactive ride. There were also plenty of well-preserved relics. They even had the remains of a woman dating back to the Viking Age. We then visited the last remaining part of York Castle, Clifford's Tower. The original timber tower was burned down in 1190 after a mob attacked about 150 members of the Jewish community where they all committed mass suicide. Many believe that the present tower built in the 13th century was used as a treasury and later as a prison. Many of these stories are detailed on the plaques in the tower. But one of the reasons to come here is to enjoy the spectacular views of York. It's a shame that not much remains of the original York Castle, which was built by William the Conqueror in 1068. However, if you wish to learn more about the castle itself, at the base of the castle is the York Castle Museum. Also, it was a must for me to have an ice cream cone. Yorkshire ice cream is one of the best. The next place we went to was a bit odd, but Adrian wanted to see it. It's Dick Turpin's grave. For those of you who do not know who Dick Turpin is, he was a highwayman or a robber whose story was romanticized over the centuries. After moving to Yorkshire where he assumed the name of John Palmer, he was later found out and executed for the many crimes he committed after they found out who he really was. One of our favorite parts of the city are the museum gardens where the Yorkshire Museum can be found. This botanical garden is an oasis in the city, especially in the spring with its abundant flowers and singing birds. There are several historic buildings in the gardens. They contain the remains of the west corner of the Roman fort of Eboracum, including the Multangular Tower, St. Mary's Abbey, founded in 1055 and was once the largest and richest Benedictine establishment in the north of England. The Hospitium, which once housed guests, which were mostly merchants who were not allowed to stay with the monks in the abbey. York Museum Gardens offer a delightful escape in the heart of York. Founded in the 1830s, these botanical gardens boast a vibrant collection of plants and trees with winding paths and sprawling lawns. It is also a perfect place to observe wildlife such as squirrels jumping across trees and different types of beautiful birds, each with melodic songs to sing. And past the gates of the museum gardens is the Dame Judy Dench Walk, where we strolled along the scenic River Ouse. And speaking of the River Ouse, this vital waterway that flows through the city of York is popular for rowing, kayaking, and cruises. Take a cruise on the river on a beautiful sunny day. We wanted to get on one, but unfortunately, we were running out of time. But strolling along the river on a beautiful sunny day in York was a perfect way to end our afternoon.
After all that walking, Adrian and I had to rest our weary feet and eat dinner. So we decided to do it in another iconic and historic place, the Guy Fawkes Inn. This historic building is where Guy Fawkes was born in 1570. And for those of you who don't know who Guy Fawkes is, well, let me tell you. Guy Fawkes, along with his fellow Catholic conspirators, tried to blow up Parliament on the 5th of November, 1605. Well, let's say it didn't go to plan and they got caught and Guy Fawkes died a miserable death in 1606. Since then, the Brits have been celebrating Guy Fawkes Night on November 5th. Do you recognize that sinister mask? Yes, that was patterned after good old Mr. Fox. I love the pub in this inn. It literally was stepping into a time machine. The food and the drinks were absolutely delicious, especially their pie, which they claimed to be the best in York. And my favorite British dessert, sticky toffee pudding. When in York, don't forget to have Yorkshire pudding. Yorkshire pudding, which is a baked savory pudding made with a batter of eggs, salt, milk, and flour. It's perfect with roasts and is a common British side dish. But lately, there have been many variations, including those that use oversized puddings as a dish itself. I highly recommend that visitors of York try one. York is a pretty small city, which is common for most cities in England. However, everywhere we went was so charming and historic. I wish we had spent more time in York, and these are the two places that we would have visited if we did. First is the National Railway Museum with its impressive collection of trains from all over the world, including the Flying Scotsman. Next is the medieval townhouse Barley Hall, which was restored to its original state in the 1980s. Walking all over the city was very enjoyable. Getting around is easy. The entire city is very walkable. However, you can also use the hop-on, hop-off bus, which could take you to some of the other places outside of the city. You can combine this with a city cruise too. Also, like most of England, most establishments are cashless and accept card and phone payments. We hope you liked this video and we also hope we showed you why York is arguably the most beautiful city in England that is worth a visit. We have so many more adventures coming up such as our trip to the Lake District and Guatemala. Subscribe now to get notifications of our upcoming videos. Thank you again for watching and we can't wait to see you again soon. Stay curious and keep exploring.